I'm Nathaniel Rumful Jantz. I know sometimes I say it so quickly, it kind of all blends together. You can get your Rumful Stiltskin jokes out if you want. I've heard all of them. You can get your Jantz jokes out. I don't really know what jokes you make without knowing me with that last name, but Jantz in the Pants was, was one when I was a kid. Uh, whatever that was supposed to mean. Is that an insult or is that a uh, a compliment? I'm not, I'm not really sure. Most people in my life will just call me Nate. Uh, if I go to Nathaniel Rumpel Jantz, it's probably because I'm in trouble. <laughs> like if Yulia, my, my lovely fiance, is upset with me, uh, she'll yell my full name out or even my mother to this day, if she seems to be upset at me about something, which it's it's weird when when your parent gets upset at you. And you wouldn't been there where, where, where you're, you're in your mid-30s and then your, your parents get upset with you. Don't live with my parents. Don't rely upon my parents. Uh, I love my parents. And I'm not going to say they don't do anything and buy things for my kids. I mean, they're grandparents. They do what grandparents do. But I, I find it interesting um, when my full name is said by me every single day because I do that for transparency, right? I, I say Nathaniel Rumpel Jantz because I'm proud of what I do. I don't hide. A lot of people in my position hide, okay? They don't want their full name out there, you know? And I'm not being critical of those people, but I believe in in, in total transparency and total accountability. I believe in I should be able to Google my name. Anybody should. And what you're going to find are things I'm actually proud of. References to Zelda Informer, Amgamnesia, Nintendo Prime, uh, Nintendo Everything. You're going to find references to me at all of these different places. You'll probably find some really whacked out, incomplete LinkedIn profile as well uh, that hasn't been updated in like a decade. It's interesting that I choose to do that because it is more of an old school mentality. I was a video game journalist and I... As a former video game journalist, I believe in being transparent. I believe in being accountable. I believe in being trackable. It would have been easy all these years that I was doing journalism to not use my name. Use a username. In fact, when I was editor-in-chief of Zelda Informer, a majority of the writers, even though I might have known who they were, chose to use usernames. And that's fine. They were worried about many things. Uh, There's a lot of things to be worried about in this world. We have legitimately people in our community that worry about being doxxed if their name got out there. What their reasoning is for worrying about that, not really my concern. They have their own rhymes and their own reasons. There are people that worry with your name being out there uh, that you're putting yourself at really big risk. Well, my name's been out there pretty much my whole life. I used to do school musicals and plays, and so my name would get published in local newspapers and online websites. I've appeared in my local news, I don't know, a half dozen times. In fact, I made the front page of my local newspaper from a talent show when I sang Backstreet Boys back in my senior year of high school. I, my name has basically been published publicly since I was a kid. So I've never been afraid. I've never lived in fear. I have three children, a fiance. I'm sure if you dig super, super hard, you could find my address somewhere online. I don't know where because I don't list it anywhere, but I'm sure you can find it. Or if not my current address, maybe one of my former addresses that I've lived at, which, you know, it's even scarier if someone shows up at a former address or tries to swat me at a former address because I would feel responsible for something when I don't even live there. But people are going to do what they do in the Internet's can be a really scary place. Now, why am I saying all this? Well, as of yesterday, I have officially, sort of been this unofficially for a bit, but officially I have become a full-time YouTuber. It is something I have pushed back against for most of this year and and, and last year uh, and, and just in general. I mean, last year... It was easy to push back on the idea that I'm a full-time YouTuber because when I filed my taxes at the end of the year, I made nothing. That's because of all the money we spent, right? We rebuilt this studio, heavily invested, $3,000 TV behind me, right? 
Yeah, even this year, right? We got the, these new expensive microphones and audio equipment that we invested this year. Uh, and we have one more massive investment still coming where we're planning to buy a $6,000 camera and lens combo and related accessories. Uh, it's going to end up being pretty, pretty pricey. Although I'm starting to find ways that I might be able to get the, that price to, to come down a little bit. It's still going to be expensive. Uh, so there's still future investments to come. And even after that, while I plan to not really buy anything else, for a couple of years, we all know the way it goes, right? You know, you, you can plan not to do something and then you find new ways to invest uh, that don't need to be done. Uh, to be clear, n what I'm doing right now is not needed to be a full-time YouTuber. You can be a full-time YouTuber with nothing but a cell phone. You can be a full-time YouTuber with USB microphones at $100 or less. Uh, you can be a full-time YouTuber without multiple computers. There's three computers turned on right now just to record this video just so I have backup audio and redundancy and if I need to look up additional information because I don't want to have to get up and keep move over to my other computer because well if I get up right now <laughs> I kind of have a, a little bit of tushy injury at the moment so it kind of hurts so I'd rather just kind of stay stationary if I can and it's interesting because I don't have to have a set like this I don't need this to be successful on YouTube. In fact, there are some people that will say, my best videos have come when all I've done is voice over gameplay, which is where I basically just turn on my microphone and talk about whatever the hell I need to talk about, don't care about the camera, and then, you know what? We just throw it over a gameplay. Even sometimes the gameplay is five years old. I'll grab an old Breath of the Wild clip I recorded five years ago, and we'll just talk over that, and some people love those videos. Uh, it, it, it's quite interesting the way my channel has evolved uh, to get to this point where I'm now calling myself a full-time YouTuber. Because as I said last year, we reinvested so much money between the giveaways and the equipment that we made nothing. The channel might have had $23,000, $24,000 in revenue, but none of it was pocketed. None of it actually went to me. It all went back out to you guys. So was I a full-time YouTuber? When I made nothing, now I understand other YouTubers might run on this principle. Mr. Beast, as an example, he reinvests all his money, but I mean, that's just what he says. He clearly doesn't make himself go homeless and not support his kids. When I say I literally invested everything, that means that I had to have money coming from other areas in my life, and I did. And this year I had a job that I was doing, um, an IT job. And it was just a, a, an at-home IT job. Uh, you know, I help people deal with some things. I can't go into all of the details, but basically they would call. Um, I would get on a call, on an internet call, and, and help people out with their computer issues uh, at certain businesses. And I've been doing that uh, sort of behind the scenes without really talking about it to anybody. Uh, I didn't really even talk about it to Eric or Yulia or my parents or anyone uh, it, it, as a way to make sure that, that the money stayed pretty stable around my family. Well, my hours got cut, uh, and after they got cut, I already had considered at that point quitting the job because they cut me from from almost full time to to barely part time, and the hours never really got better, but the demands were becoming greater. Instead of it being like a two to four hour per day thing, they were starting to ask for six to seven, which is basically getting back to full time, except they weren't willing to pay me for that extra time. So it was a pretty easy decision for me to yesterday turn in my two weeks notice to uh this company i was working for and my boss at that time the moment i handed him the two weeks notice told me yeah you can go you can clock out we don't need you anymore now today it's been since clarified that i no longer work at the company uh, so it wasn't like they were just giving me a day off it was no you're you're done now whether or not they want to argue they fired me whether or not I want to argue that I'm not fired, I quit, I resigned, I don't know. None of that really matters because I'm, I'm not going to put this job on my resume anyways. They're kind of douchebags. But and I'll say that now because I don't, I don't work for them any now. They, they didn't treat me right. It's not something I, I really care to put on my resume. I have other IT experience, both from Geek Squad back in the day. I also worked at a, a really big tech company uh, years ago. So I've got other experience to put on my resume for that sort of stuff. That's way more relevant than, than that job. But I've had it hit me over the last 24 hours that I'm not even looking for a new job. 
because this is my job. And accepting that YouTube is my job and not just this hobby I make money from is a weird sensation because that's kind of been my dream. I've been dreaming of doing YouTube full time for five years. I attempted it once back in 2019 and that was foolhardy. Who attempts to make YouTube their full time job when you've never made more than $3,000 in a single year? What? Who does that? At least I could say, hey, look, I made $24,000 last year. That's not nothing. And if revenue increases, suddenly you're at $30,000 a year. And for some people, that's pretty livable. Some people. Depends on where you are. For me, I live in the middle of Wisconsin where things are cheap. So because of that, it's a pretty livable wage to even support a family on. Uh, I wouldn't say that it makes you middle class, but it definitely, uh, you're not sitting there scraping by wondering where your next meal is coming from, right? So it puts me in this interesting perspective where, I got to consider, you know, doing this full time because that's what I wanted. But I never really built my channel aiming for that. What happens in life is a lot of people think to be successful, you need to have money. This YouTube thing I do that I've been doing for a long time and before this journalism stuff, has never had the support of my family. And I don't mean Yulia. I mean my parents. I've been doing this kind of thing since I was 12. Most of it on the side, always at other jobs. But five years ago, uh, I, really back in 2019, uh, I lost a job that was paying me about 3000 a month. Uh, and it was a big hit. And I haven't made as much money since those days when I had like the little side income from YouTube plus you know, that 3000 plus a month from that job. But what I, what I find interesting is despite making less money in the last two years, last three years now, two and a half, everything's fine. When I thought I needed $4,000 in revenue a month to get by, I didn't. And when I had more money than I do today, it didn't necessarily make me happy. And I sat there talking to a lot of people who, that, that make uh, pretty good money and kept asking them, you know, and, you know, how happy they are in life. And they'll talk about their, their careers and their houses and their cars and these fancy things they have. And I, I keep going, okay, but I asked if you're happy. I didn't ask what you can buy. I didn't ask what you have. I didn't ask about your $15,000 dream computer that you that you bought pre-built because you got so much money, you don't even need to build it yourself to save a few thousand bucks. You just have a different company build it for you. I didn't ask you about your vacations and your jet skis. And, you know, I didn't ask you about the yacht that maybe you're, you rent or own out, out in Miami. I didn't ask you about that. I asked you a very, very simple and pointed question. Are you happy? And in talking to many of, of these people, come to find out that some of them are. But none of the things that make them happy are things they could buy with money. Does being on the yacht make them happy? No. It's Netflix and chilling with their wife. Does... You know, being able to go on these elaborate vacations to, to, to Disney World, make them happy with their kids. No, it's actually pretty stressful to take your kids out to Disney World. But playing catch with their son in their backyard, that made them happy. These tangible, memorable things that while the children and somebody might be getting some excitement, like when you take your kids to Disney World, the, the kids can be really, really excited. But for parents, you're worrying about a billion things. Keep your driving my kids, make sure they don't run off, making sure they, they eat, eat right, don't just eat sugar all day, you know, waiting in lines for hours and keeping your kids entertained and getting annoyed and having one kid want one thing, one kid wants another thing. Everyone's coming at you and you, you know, your feet are hurting and you're in pain and you're hot and sweaty. All these things that like you're dealing with as a parent when you take your kids on vacation is so the kids have fun. Because it's important to you that you sacrifice for your children. 
But what about yourself? And it turns out they do enjoy their kids. Yeah, they want to see them happy, but their favorite times aren't when they're happy doing those like extravagant things. But when they're doing the simple stuff that you really don't need a bunch of money to do. And these conversations were important when I was considering doing YouTube full time. It's not that I don't want to make a bunch of money doing YouTube. Who wouldn't want to be making a hundred thousand plus dollars a year and living a, you know a, a really good life? I, I would love to, you know, instead of living in this place, go go buy a house out on the lake and, and get my jet skis and you know just just have a more full of stuff life, I guess. Right? It would be really nice if at times like this when. I got a little injury on the booty that I could go soak in a hot tub because I can afford to have a hot tub, right? It would be really, really nice to have some of these amenities. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I don't want this channel to grow. I do want this channel to grow because there's things I want to do at this channel that are not possible unless it grows. Now, speaking of possibilities, I did forget to do today's code for the giveaway. It only appears in one video. So uh, <laughs> the code to... To get extra 20 entries in our little uh, broken down Game Boy wall art piece, uh, to you know, it's worth $300, so it's a pretty pricey thing. If you uh, want your extra 20 entries, just enter the code today. Humbleness. It's an interesting choice of code today because to make the decision I'm making today is to be a bit humble about my situation. I'm going to continue making content and doing crazy things and trying crazy ideas, building other sets down the line that, that are just absolutely stupid and unneeded, uh, trying new things, new shows, new ideas. Um, don't know that I'm going to be improving the audio equipment that much. I'm probably going to get a little bit of a, a, a better wireless audio system. You guys saw the issues of my wireless audio system during uh, the Prime Gaming Fest. First time I've ever tried running two mics and it was just a mess. So... You guys saw the issue with that, but um, besides that, I'm, I'm kind of done with the bigger investments besides the camera, but I'm going to keep pushing because I love this, and I've gotten some modicum of success at this despite most people around me telling me to stop. When are you going to quit and get a real job, Nate? When are you going to stop talking about and playing video games and grow up? You've got children to support. Doesn't it bother you that they're not, you know, properly taken care of or according to their standards anyways? No. I'm happy. And you can't buy that. My children are pretty happy too. And you can't buy that either. My dog is pretty happy and really can't buy that. My fiance has had an awakening over the last couple of years uh, and she's extremely happy. And again, you can't buy that. And when you only have one life to live, we need to keep sight of what matters the most in that life. And that is that we enjoy and smile every day and have a modicum of happiness. And that is why today, as scary as this is to say I'm a full-time YouTuber, because now I don't, I don't have anything else to fall back on. If we have a bad revenue month at the channel, there's nothing to make up for it. We're technically having a bad revenue month right now. We're, we're what, nine days in, and I've only made like $200 on YouTube so far uh, this month. That's scary. That's, uh, for some people panic inducing for me i've been here before it's all gonna work out and it's gonna work out because i believe in what i'm doing i believe that what i'm creating here with you guys matters it matters to me and i know it matters to some of you some of you that have stuck around for 20 minutes or so hearing me ramble on on these stories wondering why is he going so in-depth about this stuff that once you just say, hey, I'm a full-time YouTuber, thank you guys so much for making this possible, blah, blah, blah. Sure, I've seen people uh, make those announcement videos in the past where it's like, thank you so much for allowing this to happen. And I am grateful. 
But more than that, I'm relieved. I get to be my own boss all the time, and that's scary. Paying my own health insurance, that's scary. You know, not having, you know, benefits and and, and 401ks and retirement plans, it's scary. It's always been scary. Even when I did have it, I was still scared. But now, I don't have to do something I don't like to do anymore. I get to raise my kids plan lovely vacations with my fiance, do things with her as well, uh, hang out with my friends, play video games, and talk about video games for a living. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that like a, a crazy thing to say? I get to talk about video games for a living. And yeah, I give back as much as I can. I mean, think about this. I'm somebody that, you know, oh my gosh, if I only had that revenue last year, it's $24,000 to support a family. And yet I had like $15,000 worth of giveaways last year. Think about... People People get this impression that I, uh, I'm just sitting on piles of money over here, right? I mean, look at all, look at all the stuff that's on my, in my studio. I have m- multiple systems and computers and fancy audio equipment. And you'll see me wearing a suit in some videos uh, with, the, with the neon Nintendo Prime sign behind me and... There's this impression that's given off that because there's so much stuff invested in this studio that I, uh, you know, have a, have a ton of money. I don't. Sure, the value of my studio is quite high. And if I ever hit a point that my family's in trouble, you damn well believe I'll start selling off the studio. Because, hey, there's about $30,000 worth of equipment in this room I'm sitting in right now. Consider that my windfall, maybe, at the moment. Worst comes to worst. It all has to go. But, but, to a bigger point, I am just happy. So, for the first time in channel history... This is Nathaniel Rumpeljantz from Nintendo Prime. And I'm a full-time motherfucking YouTuber. And I can't wait to see what that's going to lead to as we continue to grow together. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you're smiling a little bit brighter today. Maybe this news makes you happy. Maybe it makes you sad. Maybe I got haters out there that are, Oh my God, mm, he's making it? That's, that's Oh no, what a piece of crap. You know what? Think what you want. But I'm here to stay. And hopefully I get to keep doing this thing for many, many, many years to come. So let's grow this channel together. Let's get to the point where maybe I can hire a real video editor, you know, someone who actually knows what they're doing, unlike me, uh, and end up in a better, happier place for us all. Thank you, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.